Well, could you start off by introducing yourself with your name and your job title? Okay. My name is Adam Abatawale, and I'm the visual effects supervisor for Under the Dome. Nice. I was wondering how you pronounce your last name. Abitabile. You say it with your hands. Abitabile. It's more Italian that way. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Actually, it's some Italian to me, too. Nice. All right. So I guess just kind of start off, um, what does your day-to-day -day job involve, typically? Uh, it depends on the, the, the point we're at in production. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I'm kind of unique in the sense that I have to do pre-production, production, and post-production. Okay. So, for instance, we start off with, you get the script, and it says something wacky like, the spaceship lands and aliens come out, and we talk and have many meetings and do all that kind of thing and go through the process of figuring out what we what the director wants to see, what his vision is, um, how we're going to achieve that under the time constraints and the budget constraints we always have, especially in episodic television, and then, um, you know, schedule it and figure out right. all the departments who would need to work for that. And then when we get to production, we actually shoot the thing. And that's primarily my job. It's one of the reasons I'm not here is working on those shows because it has to be filmed a certain way for our artists back in Los Angeles to be able to work with the, the footage. Okay. So uh, it's, you know, dealing with green screens and, and, right. and camera information. And, you know, when we're building a CG environment, I need to know exactly where the, the physical camera was in the position. So, you know, lens information, height, tilt, all that good stuff. So we can recreate that in a CG environment. And so we go through that whole process, film the episode or movie or whatever ends up being. Then that footage gets sent to, sent to our team in Los Angeles, and then I supervise the work that's being done by the 40 or 50 artists working on the actual show. Wow. And that's back and forth. They send me versions. Like, go, yeah. yes, this is beautiful. No, this sucks. And send it back, and we figure out the right way to enact the director and producer's vision, essentially. Cool deal. Yeah. That's awesome. So when, you, when you're on set, do you like stay on set and you just kind of supervise the shooting to make sure it's being done correctly? Or? Yeah, I mean, when, when there's visual effects shots there, I'm, I'm, right. doing, cause I'm directly responsible for all the visual effects sh for the entire show. So there's always like, well, if he wasn't here, they could put the finger later on. So <laughs> you always got to be there to kind of cover your ass and their ass. Yeah. I was checking out your IMDb last night. Mm -hmm. and had some really impressive credentials. Oh, thanks. Man. I, I was like geeking out. I was yeah. like, oh, it was on Game of Thrones? Yeah, no, just briefly. I didn't do a lot of cool shit for it, but it was, it was, it was a cool job. Oh, that was really cool, man. Yeah. I, Love that show. Big nice. on that show. Yeah, totally. Me too. Um, so I guess you kind of, well, I kind of just mentioned this. Um, what is the production you worked on, and do you have a favorite? Uh, I think my favorite to this day is still working on the last season of Lost. Okay. That was cool That's for awesome. a number of reasons. I mean, in this, in, in what I do, it, there's a lot of times where you work on something and it may not be the best show in the world. I mean, you may not really be so in love with the, the subject matter, but really what it comes down to is as long as the effects look cool, that's fine. I didn't write it, I didn't act in it, but did the, did the spaceship look cool? That's fine, that's what right. I care about. So it's nice when you get a project that you actually are into as well. And it's only happened a, a few times. I've been doing this stuff for almost 16 years now. It's, I can probably count on one time, at one hand, how many times that's happened. Right. And Lost was one of those, because I was a fan beforehand, and I only worked the last season. Um, but I got to, and I'm a, I grew up in Southern California, so I'm a beach bum at heart, so I got to live in Hawaii for a year. Oh, wow. And I met my wife out there, you know, this whole thing. So and it was also just a, a really cool project. And that's the first time I met Jack Bender, who's the executive producer of this show. Okay. So we've been working together for a long time. Um, and so it was, a, it was a fun show to work on, especially the last season. And trying to wrap it up, one of the, arguably one of the biggest television shows yeah, of all time. For sure. Trying to wrap it up in a big way, so that was kind of fun to be a part of. And just living in Hawaii, I'll, I'll do everything in my power to get back there someday and live there permanently. Wow. So that was probably the best experience I've had so far. That's so awesome. Yeah. I guess this kind of helps bridge into the next question. What made you decide to do visual effects? Um, <laughs> I don't know, but kind of, I needed, I wanted to do something in the film industry. Like, I went to school to be a screenwriter, um, got really into that, it was, that was my goal for, my, my passion for a long time, and then, uh, it just, it, a number of things happened, I think it was kind of fueled by adolescent angst in a lot of ways, and the older I got, the more, more I couldn't put into it what I was doing before, and also, I, I heard the horror stories of how hard it was to, to be a writer in, in Hollywood, it's just, it's just, how do you put, this is back in the, Late '90s, when I was well, actually more saying early '90s, when I was first starting to study this stuff, so it was there was no clear route in how to get in, get your foot in the door. So um, I, I want to get paid one these days. So <laughs> I graduated school and um, came back home, and uh, there was there was like, okay, I, what do I do now? And I always liked science fiction stuff and, and the fantastic, you know. But my first memory of all time is waiting in line to see the original Star Wars movie when I was three years old. Yeah. I've awesome. oh, got a Star Wars tattoo. You, 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 the, the, oh. the geek, the geek flag is, is very high in my head. Seven, when it comes out, yeah, yeah. Right. We'll, well, hopefully, fingers <laughs> crossed. Um, so I always liked the fantastic. Even when I was writing, I was always writing science fiction and that kind of yeah. stuff. So I tried to figure out, all right, well, if I can't do it this way, maybe I can try it this way. Mm -hmm. And at the time when I was getting into it, it wasn't being taught anywhere. Like you take some the, the visual effects classes were, were, were like 
secondary education stuff through like junior colleges, they were they called web design, which wasn't really web design at all. The teachers had like, uh, the teachers had no idea what they were doing either because they weren't in the business. So it was all about who you knew, and I didn't know anybody. So I ended up going to Los Angeles, and uh, my cousin was dating a guy who was working on one of the Star Trek movies. And I worked for free for about six months, and that was pretty much it. Was Star Trek? It was an insurrection. Nice. Yeah. Cool deal. Yeah, I was sitting behind him and watching him work for like hours at a time. He probably hated me, but it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Got you where you were. Yeah, it did, yeah. So I guess uh, you've done this for how long now? It's been it's going on sixteen years, so oh. fifteen, sixteen years, something like that. So I guess uh, what would you say is your favorite and least favorite part of the job? Um, well, favorite is always kind of like you do something cool and it doesn't have to be so much what, what was never been done before because I started off in features and did that whole thing worked on a bunch of movies and I, I also worked on TV as well and I kind of gravi gravitated more toward television because it's you can push the boundaries a little bit more right? just because it's like you do some really amazing in television everyone goes oh my god well you, you probably had two weeks to do that and probably you know a tenth of the money that a feature has and look, look at that it, it, the quality level between television effects and film effects keeps getting Smaller and smaller. Yeah, uh, the gap between, I should say. Uh, <clears throat> so, so I, I feel more of an accomplishment when I can do that kind of stuff on television shows. Um, limitations, let's say. Um, so that's always kind of fun to do that way when you, when you pull something off and you see it. And I'm an inherently a, a, a patient person, so when you work on a movie, maybe it'll be six, seven months before you see the final product. Mm -hmm. Now, if you work on a TV show, I might see it a month later. It's kind of nice. So <laughs> it fuels my ego, I guess. The worst part, I'd say, is. Uh, you know, all the horror stories you've heard about Hollywood, they're all true, to a certain degree. You know, I've seen the, the, the assistant get fired for bringing the wrong latte to set. And I've seen oh, wow. seen the actors who, on that day, you can't look them in the eye because they're in character, and that kind of stuff. Oh, wow. I've seen all that stuff happen <laughs> many times, actually. And every time something like that happens, you're like, well, what? why are they Why are they so different than other human beings if they have to treat people like that? Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's just a sad realization of this business. It really is. It's not pervasive, it's not everybody, it's, 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 it's still a small minority, and it gets more minority every single year, but it still surprises me when it happens. Right. That's probably the, probably the worst part for me, I'd right. say. That, that scares me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you'll run it, you've been in London, you'll run it, you'll yeah. run it. Just, wow. just stay out of, out of the line of fire, you'll be fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've already talked about this a little bit, but um, what kinds of positions or opportunities in the industry led you to the job you have now? Positions or opportunities in the industry led me? Well, um, like I said before, I was kind of all my training was pretty much on on the job training. Right. So I started at the bottom. I was a compositor, which is basically there's two different fields in the in visual effects: there's 3D and 2D. Mm -hmm. So I use the example of um, Jurassic Park. Like the 3D guys make the dinosaur, animate them, make them growl, all that kind of thing. Right. 2D guys take that, put it into the stuff that was shot. Jeff Goldblum going, "Oh God, there's a dinosaur there," and makes it look make it look real and put it into the scene. So I started off as a 2D guy, and it was just basic. I mean, do the Two-dimensional uh, 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 digital uh, compositing is, is hugely important, but also can be very small. Like I, removing you know herpes off of someone's face, or you know, <laughs> they say it was a cold sore, uh, or fixing someone's bald spot, or this this, right. this actress didn't like the wrinkles underneath her eyes. Mm -hmm. We call that digital janitor stuff. Just fixing a little shit here and there. And it's soul sucking because it sucks. <laughs> it's really boring. It takes. It's sometimes it's difficult, and it just it, it, it takes a long time to do that kind of stuff. So that was kind of like the entry level position, I guess. Yeah. And then I started. And luckily, I was working for a company that was relatively small, and so they were getting a lot of work, and they need to kind of promote for, with, from within. So I was. I supervised my first TV show in two thousand. Some show called Witchblade. It was based on a comic book. It's really bad. But, uh, you know, I got to live in Toronto for a year and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. I guess it was, for me, the opportunities were pretty much starting with a small company, paying my dues. Like I said, I did the, the three or four months, maybe it was almost six months of free labor, wow. which sucked. Um, but they had kind of like, well, we don't have no experience. You, know, you don't have a demo reel, you know, anything like that. So, you got to see if you at least have the aptitude or can be trained well. Right. So, I did that. And then, those, then the doors opened up from there. And the first company I worked with, I was with, with them for almost 13 years. Yeah, so I kind of grew with them, which was nice. So my, my, my story is probably a little bit um, uh, unique in compared to people getting into the industry nowadays. Because now you can go in school and major in visual effects. Right. Yeah, so it's a, it's a whole different kind of landscape than it was you know, 15, 16 years ago. Actually, bridges is really well into my next question. Cool. Uh, this is kind of uh, something I'm asking just because I hear this a lot. Like, as a film student, I'm told often that I don't need a college education to go into the industry yeah. and um, for what I want to do. And I was going to ask you, do you feel college education was an important factor in getting you where you are today? 
or getting any kind of high level position in the film industry? Not in the film industry. No, not at least on my path. Okay. Like you know, I started off as a film major and I kind of switched to, to journalism mm -hmm. and kind of went off the, the path from there because I still thought I was going to be a writer. Um, but no, it didn't really help me at all. <laughs> and, and you hear that more often than not, actually. Right. In fact, a lot of times you'll you'll run some kid who's an intern like yourself, like, oh, I just graduated from film school, and we all kind of laugh a little bit. Yeah. It's not because it wasn't a valuable experience. I'm not, I'm not saying that you didn't learn anything. I'm sure you probably learned more stuff than I know in a lot of ways. But when it comes to like real-world experience of working on a set or dealing with a production schedule or dealing with a, a production deadlines, more importantly, especially on the post-production side of things, right. you can't teach that stuff. Yeah. And so a lot of times you get these people in there who have this head full of knowledge and, and they're used to working at a school's pace and that just doesn't work. You know? So like for instance, we always have the difference between feature artists and, and television artists. And you know, the, everyone's worked on television, worked on features and vice versa, right. that's just the way it goes. Um, some of the feature artists think they're a little bit more uh, hoity-toity than the others because you know, I worked on Star Wars and Transformers and look at this amazing effects they did. Yeah, sure. Well, that one shot, there was 30 people working on it. The TV show, you got one person working on it. And these guys are used to having six months to do a shot, where I've got I, I get done in three days. So I got a feature guy with this amazing resume, this amazing demo reel, who works on a television show, and he can't hack it. Wow. It's because he just can't handle the schedule and you know, the, the, the requirements it takes to, to deal with a television show delivery schedule. So um, it, it, the training is it's it's all about you, man. It's like if you can handle it and if you can absorb absorb the knowledge, it's great. But I, but I still think I mean probably wish I'd finished out the film school thing because I think I would be a little more well rounded than I am now. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that would have helped me get to where I am right now. So it's kind of like in retrospect, I almost want to go back now and do the, the film degree once I that now I know what yeah. I know and that would be right. much much better. But if I'd done it from the get go, I I don't know if I'd be here. Probably wouldn't. Probably do something else. Good not to not to discourage the, the money you spent in college and that kind of thing, right. but anyways, that's just my personal experience. Yeah, I mean, I've still learned a lot. So and I, mean, I know you have, yeah. yeah. And like I said, there's, there's, there's some stuff you were taught that I had either learned the hard way or still don't know it, grasp exactly the way I should. You right. know, I'm fine with that. Which is why I'm thankful for this internship, because I totally. came in, I was like, oh, I know stuff. Then I'm like, I don't know anything. Yeah, exactly. So I learned, learned a lot. It's been great being here. When you get it for your first gig, you realize you still don't know anything. And right. You'll figure it out. And it's funny, like, I feel like I don't know anything, and, like, one of the guys in the shop will be like, I'll be like, how was production the other day? And they'll be like, oh, I just felt really incompetent. I'm like, you? you know? <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. It <laughs> so. doesn't matter like, your experience level, you always have those days. Right. I had one of those days last night, actually, so yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. So, uh, I guess, what is one thing you wish you had known from the beginning, like, involving the field or the industry? Jeez. Um, one thing I would have wish I have known from the beginning. Uh, well... I, well, I, I guess I guess I, I, I wish I knew that film the film business would have would have left LA <laughs> because when I first got into it that was the place to be right you know and uh, so all the work was being done at home and it was easy mm -hmm. it was no, no big deal but for the last five six years it's it, we all have to be nomads because there's no work there because there's nothing being shot there still stuff being all the posts are still being done there right. which I can you know it, it's just thing I'm still do I still do the artist thing when I when, usually when I supervise a show I probably do a quarter and a half the shots myself which is kind of what I do because I'm a weirdo like that. Um, but it's a kind of fine line, like you do the artist thing for a while and you're in this cold dark office and your eyes go square after a while and then you're like, oh, you're longing to be on set. Then you do five months on a set on a show like this and you're like, oh shit, I want to get back to that cold dark office and my eyes go square again. <laughs> so it's this kind of halfway point, but the fact that I have no choice when I want to surprise a show, I pretty much have to go out of town and leave my wife and friends and family like that. That's tough, you know? And it's one thing to say, okay, we'll pack up the family and move to um, Georgia or wherever it is. it's hot right now. And then that changes five years from now. It, it's a hard decision to make. So right. I guess I wish I would, and that was just me being naive to think that, that Hollywood would always be Hollywood. But mm -hmm. it's not anymore at all. So that would have been nice to know. Yeah. Probably would have changed my mind. Probably would have done the same thing. But it's been it's been rough being away, yeah. for sure. Right. That's something a lot of people I feel like don't think about. Mm -hmm. That's very yeah. interesting. Wow. So I kind of touching on the same kind of area. Mm -hmm. What's like the most valuable lesson or experience you've gained from your career? Whew, that's really deep questions. Um, valuable lesson <laughs> gained from my career? No, 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 it's fine. It's, I, I've always been a creative person, so I, I, I just, even though it's a job and there's some horrible days mm -hmm. and being away from friends and family and all that kind of stuff, it's still a pretty cool job at the end of the day. Right. You know, I take a step out of myself and go, wow, I just, it's something blow up, or I made the aliens land, or whatever. And, you, know, some, you know, I was working on Lost, and we were doing the smoke monster stuff, and trying to figure out how, to, how the smoke monster works, and, and those were cool moments. So I'm not sure if that's. 
I, I guess I guess the, the life lesson for me is more like you can be creative and and still be you know not successful, but I mean you can still make some decent money and be creative. You don't have to be this this shut in artist thing. I guess I found for me I found this nice halfway point between being a technician and being an artist in a way, mm -hmm. you know, which is kind of hard to do. It's you usually get one or the other, you know. So you're either very technically minded and you can tell you the specs of a camera all day long, but then you can't shoot with it, you know, that whole thing. Right. So it's been kind of a nice in-between stuff. So it's, it's really using, if you believe in the whole both sides of your brain bullshit, um, <laughs> which I guess I don't, but by saying it bullshit, it's, it's kind of my job has been refreshing because it's a nice melding of the two things. So I'm not sure if it's really a lesson learned, but... I, you know, if you, if you like if you like weird shit, you know, if you want to do something with it, go for it. Nice. Sorry if I keep cussing. If that's a bad idea. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, it's real stuff. So okay, cool. It's, it's cool. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, you've actually talked about loss. So this kind of goes back to what would you say is your greatest accomplishment so far in your career? Uh, once again, I'm going back to loss. The finale episode of Lost. So the finale it was the series finale. I saw that you worked on that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, like that whole that whole last season was me. Um, we did 350 effect shots in three and a half weeks, which oh, is unheard of. <laughs> I worked wow. on I've worked on movies where we've done that many in six yeah. months, eight months. I had four countries working on it. I had it was just crazy amounts of people on it. We were working literally. I, I think it was, I did a 36 hour day at one point during that, oh. that schedule. It was just insanity. So that's that's my own that's my personal best, I guess. You know, just you're close to one of the biggest shows of all time. They want to go out with a big bang. It's Highest budget I've ever had for a television show, because in fact, it's like a million five or something like that, which is unheard of for it. Well, once again, they're like, for their favorite season, like, pull all the stops, here's your, here's, here's the dump truck full of money, go crazy. It was fun, and the stuff looks good for the most part. Whether you like the way the show ended or not, I once again, I didn't write it. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually never watched, well, I mean, I've watched Lost, but I've never yeah. watched, like, from point eight, okay. like, beginning to end. But now I'm definitely going to. Well, we'll go to the last you, once you get to season three, if you're not into it, don't bother because it gets wacky. It gets yeah, well, that's why I saw one because I got lost. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> well, thank you so much. No, absolutely. Um, yeah. I guess this is a final thing. Is there any advice you can give to aspiring film students and interns like myself? Um, yeah, try everything. You know, don't, I mean, everyone wants to be a camera operator, everyone wants to be a director, that kind of thing. It's, it, that's cool. That's, I want to be a director. I still, part of me still wants to be a director. But try everything, because you never know. You might really hate being a director. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you might really hate being a camera operator. And not everyone wants to push a dolly either, but it's, it's, there, there's some coolness to that, you know? There's, mm -hmm. there's, there's different kind of vibes in every department. And the camera operators have their own thing, and the, and the grips have their own thing. Okay? And it's, it's, it's kind of, a, it's definitely a cool camaraderie thing goes on, which you probably had a little taste of working here. Um, but I, I'd say don't close your mind, because right out of school, you want to be like the, the most creative, cool guy in the world, but at the end, also at the end of the day, you also want to work, and you right. want to you want to if you want to stay in this business, you want to work regularly. And so, you, I'm not saying to to kind of like bring down your goals just so you can get a paycheck, but you know, keep everything in perspective. And saying you know this this is may not be the my, my when I was in college, the dream thing I want to do is be a director, but it's just, you know being an AD or something like that is kind of a halfway point, and it's more of a relative even keel thing, and I can keep a, my career going and stuff. But I just say taste all the departments, see what you can see what you like. Awesome. Cool. That's what I've been trying to do. Good, good. But thank you so much oh, for taking time out of your day. This yeah. has been awesome. Cool. Well, I'm glad it helped. <laughs> yeah, it's been really great. Nice, nice. Good. Yeah, I'm going to sign this thing for you. Yeah.